This is the Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite. Now before I hopefully get my hands on Samsung's new S20 line, I thought I'd share with you my thoughts on this rather interesting release. So during this past CES, Samsung unveiled these two phones, the Note 10 Lite and the S10 Lite. With the name Lite, it should be pretty self-explanatory when it comes to what these phones are all about, right? Basically watered down versions of what they're named after. And it's the fact that they're named after Samsung's flagships that I think Samsung is looking to get more eyes on what they're capable of doing with a mid-range smartphone, like their A series of phones. So I guess you could look at this like a Galaxy S10 Plus stripped of most of its luxuries only to be left with some essentials in a package that costs costs half as much as top tier flagships. Those essentials being good battery life, good cameras, good performance, and a good display. Now of course, what's considered essential may differentiate from person to person, but to me, these essentials are things that phones, especially nowadays, cannot do without. So if you're someone who needs their phone to have an IP rating, wireless charging, a high refresh rate, quad HD display, and stereo speakers, this isn't the phone for you. Because yes, the S10 Lite is missing all of those things. It's kind of the whole point of this phone. So I have been using the S10 Lite as my main phone for a good amount of time, and I gotta tell you, I actually really like it. The hardware is nice, it's got a simple and clean design, it's kinda boring, but it's still clean. It's pretty premium looking with those shiny metal edges. It doesn't feel cheap, even though the back is Samsung's mix of glass and plastic, known as Glastic. Yes, Glastic. There's no dedicated Bixby key, and the power button is positioned correctly in an easier to reach spot. Also, this is a huge phone. It's a bit larger than the S10 Plus, and it rivals the size of the Note 10 Plus and the OnePlus 7 Pro. It's got a very good, big, bright, punchy display. It's nice to look at even though it is 1080p at 394 pixels per inch with a 60 hertz refresh rate, but honestly, it's not the biggest deal. And I think the thing I like about the display the most is that it's completely flat and it still has minimal bezels. Now screen curves make for attractive eye candy phones and I still love curved displays, but I'm beginning to appreciate flat panels even more now because they're more practical and it's nice to use a flat panel Galaxy phone for the first time in a while. So the screen gets a thumbs up from me for sure. Next, I really enjoy the battery life, and this is probably the thing that stood out to me the most when using this phone. Screen on time is right up there with the best that I've used recently, we're talking seven to eight hours of screen on time, but what really stood out is the standby time. When the phone is idle, at least in my experience, the battery basically sits still, even with all of the notifications that it's pulling in. Very rarely do I use a phone that can last a little over 24 hours on a single charge with moderate use. I was very easily able to make it through a full day of heavy use with max brightness, LTE only, lots of Bluetooth usage, playing music while using Google Maps, answering messages and emails, everything. Definitely one of the best performers when it comes to battery that I've used. I never have to worry about the battery draining on me. I could leave the house for a Saturday night out with 20% left, having every confidence that I'd make it back home with a little gas left in the tank. And although wireless charging isn't here, being able to juice this phone up super quickly is great. Thumbs up for that as well. Speaking of performance, with last year's Snapdragon 855 and 6 gigs of RAM, performance in general is as it should be. It's very good. Just because it's using last year's processor doesn't mean it can't handle today's tasks. It just works. There's no lag, no slowdowns, it's quick, it's powerful, it'll handle all the games that you want to play, all the multitasking. Everyday and power user usage is no sweat. That's it. Thumbs up. Next up, the cameras. Now I'm not the biggest picture taker, but what this phone delivers is nothing short of high end. Competitive is what I'll say. Samsung made sure to not skimp on these cameras, and I think they did a really good job with these. They're not perfect, but what smartphone camera setup is, and they're not the best, but the results sit right up there with what we get out of some of the best smartphone cameras available. It's gonna be tough finding a better camera experience in a mid-range phone.
As for biometrics, I used the combo of face unlock and the optical fingerprint scanner, so yes, it's not the ultrasonic one that we get with the main Galaxy phones. So it may not be as secure, but it is just a tad faster, and in my experience, it's been pretty solid, and it recognizes my finger I'd say 8 to 9 out of 10 times. Face unlock is quick too, it's basically the same as what you get on the other Galaxy phones, it's quite accurate, and thanks to the software you can tweak it to your liking, which is nice. All right, so getting to some of the disappointments of this phone. Now, I know the whole point of this phone was to leave off a few things for pricing purposes, but some of these things I feel could have been dealt with differently. The first letdown is a big one for me, and no, it's not the lack of a headphone jack, I'm used to that by now. It's the lack of stereo speakers. The S10 Lite has that single bottom firing speaker setup from a few years ago. Now it gets the job done and all, but I know you guys remember this really annoying speaker placement. Not only is it so incredibly easy to cover up in any orientation, but it also doesn't sound Sound all that great. It gets about as loud as you need it to, and thank goodness it doesn't necessarily sound like a phone speaker from 2016, but the overall experience is behind not only what we have today, but it's also behind what I know for a fact Samsung could have implemented. I mean, even the Pixel 3a has stereo speakers. Oh well, like I said, it gets the job done. The haptics are underwhelming as well, this is another area I felt Samsung could have easily made better than what they did. And I know this may be considered nitpicking and not everyone really cares for good haptics, but to me, good haptics really bring the whole user experience together, and bad haptics make the phone feel kinda cheap. Now, don't worry, these haptics aren't garbage, I'm just spoiled. And again, I find the need to bring up the 3A, because that phone has good haptics. So that's pretty much it for the S10 Lite. Yes, really. It's a very simple phone that I think nails what it was made to do. Other than a couple gripes that I have with it, and perhaps some question marks surrounding its long-term support from Samsung, there really isn't anything that would hold me back from recommending it to buyers looking for something that has the more important aspects of a flagship phone without the flagship price. Just don't expect to see much of this phone anywhere unless you're in India, the UK, among other countries not named the US, but don't worry, you can pick one up online if you want. With phones like the OnePlus 7T, Pixel 3a, and more mid-range beasts coming out this year, at around 500 US, I can't say that this is the absolute best in its class. But it's right up there for sure, and I think it's one of the better values you'll find in a smartphone. If you're interested, and if I were you, I would wait for a price drop. All in all, the S10 Lite gets a thumbs up from me, and if you're able to get your hands on one, I think it's worth a look. So that'll do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, subscribe to the Android Police channel if you're new. Let us know what you think of the Galaxy S10 Lite down below in the comments, and we'll talk about it. It's been Zach, I'll talk to you guys later, and thank you so much for watching.